Hello, ladies and gentlemen, I'm George from Ireland. So behind me is um, the house where Virginia Woolf uh, lived <clears throat> uh, at the end of the, in the, the First World War and well into the 1920s. She lived here with her husband, Leonard. So I'm on Paradise Road in Richmond-upon-Thames, London. Um, and an aptly named Paradise Road as she thought this was a, such a delightful house. So who was uh, Virginia Woolf? Well, she's best known as a novelist. Uh, she's born uh, in London in 1882 in, uh, to an upper class family, a uh, very intellectual one as well. Um, she had several sisters and brothers. Her parents had both been married previously, so they're both on their second marriage. So um, both of them had some children from their, their, their first marriage and they had some common children there from, their, from their second marriage. Um, she was very close to her brother Toby. That is Toby spelt with an H-T-H-O-B-Y. Never heard of anybody else spell it that way. Um, so uh, she grew up in a house um, on Hyde Park Gate. That's the name of the street. So just south of Hyde Park is the same street where Winston Churchill lived at the right at the end of his life and indeed died in that street directly opposite uh, Virginia Virginia Woolf's childhood home. Um, she was also a cousin of James Kenneth Stephen. J.K. Stephen, the renowned uh, Cambridge Don, the tutor of um, Prince Eddie and indeed King George V. Um, and J.K. Stephen is sometimes wrongly accused of, of, of being the uh, Jack the Ripper murderer. Incidentally, um, Virginia Woolf's maiden name was Stephen. That was certain, not Stevens, Stephen. So she went to um, uh, King's College London, which had a ladies' department back then. This is about the turn of the century. And uh, though, though uh, women had been allowed to go to university in this country since the 1850s, the second country in the world to allow um, tertiary education for women, the first being the United States, um, the, some, of the, some of the universities still had women in a separate department. Uh, so uh, she graduated from there and she was fascinated by philology. Um, she uh, learned other languages. Um, she travelled abroad a little bit as a child. They often went on summer holidays to Cornwall, but uh, in the lighthouse she writes about it as though it's Scotland. She wanted people to know that it was somewhere on the Celtic fringe of uh, the United Kingdom, quite far from London. Um, anyway, so then she's part of the Bloomsbury set, this um, circle of uh, left-wing and liberal uh, intellectuals and artists. Um, really from the Edwardian period right through to the 1950s, as in because they often lived around Bloomsbury Square in London, that whole area is known as Bloomsbury. So who was else that was in it? George Bernard Shaw, John Maynard Keynes, Lytton Strachey, quite a few others. And um, they believed in heterosociality, that men and women could, could um, mingle on an equal basis without there being any expectation of any sort of romantic liaison. Men and women could simply be friends. Um, and things like that, that uh, living together if you weren't married was entirely acceptable, there was nothing wrong with homosexuality, they thought that contraception was permissible, um, or they, they often thought that eugenics was desirable. Uh, that opinion would be regarded as shocking now, they opposed racial inequality and so forth. Some of them were pacifists, vegetarians, even vegans, uh, often they're often they're anti-imperialists. So uh, these views are often now mainstream, but at the time um, they were considered um, radical and even shocking. Um, Anyway, so uh, uh, she got married, and though uh, she and her husband both seemed to have had bisexual tendencies, they moved here the Hogarth Press, named after Hogarth, the well-known 18th century artist. He actually lived in Chiswick, which is about four miles north uh, east of here. And you can see Hogarth's house, which still stands, because um, he was this um, scabrous artist who was often up lampooning Georgian society, showing the seamier side of life, the darker side of British society, a rake's progress and so on, uh, or a harlot's progress, and um, really um, lampooning the notion that uh, uh, self-improvement could lead to riches or rising in society. Um, it was rather dark and sardonic. Uh, he frankly exposed the uh, cruelty and exploitation of, of, of British society. It was a very candid look at what was actually going on. Uh, anyway, so uh, Virginia Woolf, she was part of this modernist movement where the characterization often matters more than the uh, tale. So the synopsis wouldn't have seen that enthralling a lot of the time, um, and it's, it's uh, a bit of stream of consciousness. There's an enjambment of various themes uh, in her prose. She also wrote uh, Orlando, a number of other novels, um, A Room of One's Own, because what, what a woman needs to, to be a writer is, I, I can't remember, was a hundred pounds a year and a room of one's own. And um, feminists or pro-abortion activists often quip about having a womb of one's own. 
Anyway, so she struggled with mental ill health all her life and um, she was back in central London by the time the Second World War broke out. She committed suicide in uh, 1941. You can um, see that biopic about her with uh, Nicole, Nicole Kidman in the, in the title role. Um, and uh, Virginia Woolf, she was later ridiculed by that uh, 60s film, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? Which is obviously um, a um, quip on the, the children's song, Who's Afraid of the Big Bad Wolf? Well, that is uh, um, Virginia Woolf who lived in this uh, strikingly attractive 19th century house. Unfortunately, they got some very bland 20th century buildings either side of it. Okay, I'll switch it off now.